Here's a little warming up with this contraption I came up with. And what makes this challenging is that the two ends are not equal in weight at all. So, nice, simple, but fun exercise. And again, a little extra challenging. But the coolest part here is this is one of Robert Garcia's pocket slammer saps that I decided to do something different with because obviously I have a lot of saps. Just a gorgeous piece of work. The scuffing you're going to see uh, is all me, unfortunately. I got a little too excited once I had this toy to play with, so managed to hit the kind of rough textured low ceiling in my room and the driveway in experimenting. And part of the experimentation and part of the reason for those errors is because I was experimenting with extreme length when it comes to a sap. Although, you know, technically a slung shot. Of course, I already have so many saps of different kinds, I wanted to do something unique, or unique thus far in my collection, and then I kept going on that front, because on the other end of this roughly four-foot rope, I took that kind of mini crystal ball that you see, and it's kind of a solid glass golf ball, and I put a monkey fist knot around it, not a very good one, because I'm new to that, but I made this double-ended slug shot, which in terms of like overall weaponry, you would call a um, Kusari Fundo, or Manrika Gusari. Horrible Japanese pronunciations aside. But either way, I've got a unique item. So back to this. See, this time I'm choking up on one end and finding it feels pretty cool. Works pretty well that way, right? You're accounting for the difference in weight. So I've got a overall pretty unusual item here. So what if I take the monkey fist rope slung shot end, treat that as the business side, and it works great that way. Now, typically a rope slung shot would not be that long in the Western as opposed to Japanese tradition, uh, but then again, at times it could be, especially in the sailor maritime realm, which of course is where that weapon came from originally. But anyway, speaking of this weapon here, really cool, in my opinion, hybrid, unexpected combination. And in fact, it combines even more than we've mentioned so far, but here's like a traditional Japanese kusari fundo. It's just two weights on the end of a relatively, usually short chain. And you get a lot of blocking entrapping, snaring movements. But you could absolutely, and would, strike with the ends. So you could whip it around, flick it out. Here's an old issue of a ninja magazine showing how to hold one from behind, being ready to strike out. They have an association with ninja and ninjutsu, but actually they were a police weapon, uh, just kind of an all-around popular Japanese weapon once they caught on. It's a very versatile thing. But here, from my collection, this antique bolas, shows a completely different weapon tradition from a completely different side of the world that I think my little uh, hybrid here also brings into play. This is the typical three ball configuration with one being smaller than the other two, but a more simple double-ended configuration was used and, as detailed in my book, was a weapon, not just a hunting tool. And back to the gorgeous pocket slammer. That's what uh, got all this experimentation going. And as you're about to see, it is primarily the business end on what I've created. Uh, it's heavier than the slung shot side, than the um, you know monkey fist slung shot side anyway, considerably so. And so let's play with that. Feels great. Do some overhand casts, right? You kind of surprise your opponent by lengthening it as you shoot over. Try some underhand straight shots. But then from all this, I decided, what if I use the monkey fist in a different way? And I don't know, maybe I'm the first person to ever do this, actually. It's resting in the palm of my hand. And what if that's my handle? It actually feels like the most natural thing in the world to handle it this way. Got maximum length, control, speed, feels great. And I can switch easily from one-handed full-length mode to two-handed, shorter length, but, you know, quicker mode, back and forth. And there's a one-ended weapon that some of you are probably thinking about from China here, which is the meteor ball or meteor hammer. And yeah, some of the moves from that can definitely be used here as well. And there's that, uh, I guess I'll call it monkey paw grip. And now, what if I come up with possibly another unique thing to do, which is, yeah, hold on to that monkey fist with both hands. You know, the round shape really makes sense for kind of the omnidirectional spinning that you're going to do. And just for fun, I'll try recreating that uh, ninjutsu magazine technique. So you could hold it behind your back and lash out. And here's the grip. 
pretty nifty, and I like using the SAP as the business end, as mentioned, and this as the retention system. So how about a little more experimentation? The straight shots are not very powerful at all. Granted, I'm still learning, but uh, with a much longer rope, that's a different story, or maybe an actual just all-metal end. On that last one, I tried just tossing it, which is a technique you can do. But now let's get serious on the experimentation. The pocket slammer has plenty of slam to it, I can guarantee you. Backhands, and just ready to reload. Up the difficulty here. That feels good. How about a figure eight? Works as well. And that was so fun, I decided to try a little bit more. This was after running a few miles with my kids, so that's why it's darker outside. And yeah, a very improbable tool here, but I like it. So this time we'll do a side view. The pocket slammer is filled with shot, so it's a soft sap. And part of my theory on old time slung shots is that they were filled with, you know, shot and things like that so often because it reduces rebound, so it protects the user. I only got myself into a little bit of trouble on the figure eight here, so then I choked up on the length, and it worked fine. You could even surprise somebody by hitting with both ends like that. Now you'd have to loosen up on the tail end. And I don't like that as much as having a secure grip, but you could do it. And then I could also do this. And that had a lot of pop. So a lot of different things to experiment with. A very versatile tool because of its length, differing ends, different grips. Here I'm going from kind of a passive ready position to whipping out the pocket slammer. And then I want to kind of wrap around the back and have it strike the back, which is one of the cool things you can do with a totally flexible impact weapon that's long enough. So the pocket slammer from shop number seven, shop number seven, Leather Works Impact is the full name, but made by Robert Garcia. Great piece of work. And uh, this was a really fun kind of challenge myself to do something different with it. It would work just fine as a more of a standard pocket slung shot, of course. Uh, the way I decided to use it uh, certainly doesn't lend itself to everyday carry, uh, but it sure is fun and uh, helped make for what I think is a, a successful martial arts experiment. Thanks.